everybody, it is a brand new episode of FTO Podcast. I don't know. It's, it's a good time to be back. I don't know what that was. Don't ask me, because I have no idea. But, on the good news, first off, I'm in my car, back in the old station. We don't have the computer going and doing podcasts from there. No, we're still back on the phone. And, even better news, I don't have anything lined up for today. So, it is a Monday. My son was sick, so (laughs) I'm going to be sick soon. That's how that works. Also, the strike is over! Finally, God's is finally over. So we can talk about the news in the way it was meant to be. Completely satirical. Because <laughs> we're talking about entertainment news. Let's be real, folks. We're talking about TV shows. We're talking about movies. We're talking about video games. We're talking about board games. We're talking about all the things under the nerd sun. And why take that so serious? It's escapism. We're escaping. I mean, there's there some, some respect in the craft. Right? That's some respect, like in TV shows and the pageantry of doing film and like the glory that is animation. Like, there, there is pageantry in that. Let's, let's be real about that as well. But this is just make us feel good. Make us think about stuff that we haven't thought about in a way we thought about it before. You know what I mean? That's, that's what it's interpretation in its highest form. And I, for one, am completely here for things I have been watching. If we're changing up the segments of the show. <laughs> Things I've been watching, Invincible. Oh my God! <laughs> damn you, Jeff Bezos, in this damn station of yours. Because my goodness, this show is incredible. They did something I didn't think was going to be possible. They managed to make the second season just as interesting as the first. And the time jump in the beginning took me for a loop at first, almost at the pause button. It's like, you know what? I got to come back to this because this is doing something to me that I don't really want to feel. But I saw that Venture Bros posted something that uh, one of the one of the brothers, the twins, is it truly Trotty? You'll, you'll correct me out there, I'm sure. One one of the brothers, like the big blue clone guys, they had the beard. And if you guys have been following this whole situation with like Venture Bros and uh, and Kirkman in that whole situation, so uh, he Venture Bros, and I think it was uh, the Six Okage did the cosplay of Omni Man versus like versus one of the, the twins and of course Rakage has a beard and he had a full beard in his cosplay. Kirkman said something about that. It was not a positive thing that he said. People went after him. And uh he said like, you know what? I didn't mean any harm. I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna put a beard on one of these guys in the next season. And sure enough Right off the cuff, first episode, you see the beard out there. And Venture Bro posted about it. And like, hey, you know what? Full circle. Everything happened. Everything worked itself out. And that was pretty damn interesting. So it's fun being a part of this whole blur community and seeing stuff like that happen because <laughs> Who's talking about it? I should have made a post about it. Like this stuff made full circle. I should have I should have made a post about it. It's still time. There's still time to go out and make a post about it. If you're hearing this podcast and say it's like, hey, I just saw that post today. That's why. <laughs> because of this damn podcast. This podcast is something that is just interesting. I was talking with a few uh, people. You know what? She, I don't think she'll care. Uh, for instance, we were talking about like, like the the year of um, FTO, FTO Awards. And we are talking about like, like cosplays. Like the cosplayer of the year. There's a lot of names being thrown around for cosplayer of the year. I'm, I'm taking this more serious this year than I did last year. I'm not kidding. Uh, I think it was uh, Alexis Secret. She she had it last year, and um, I'm really excited to see who has it this year. Like I I I want to do something different for the FG Awards this year. I want to do something that's more of a <sighs> integral part of the community. <laughs> I sigh because that's not really something I want to do. But talking with a few other people in like the FTO um, community, I guess that way to put it. Uh, Tashi J, who was coming back for the podcast. Uh, she had a medical uh, situation with, um, I think it was like a tonsil removal situation. I don't want to get too much into it because, like, my memory of stuff is sometimes scatterbrained at times. So, yeah, like, if she wants to talk about it on her on her platform, like, she, I'm pretty sure she will. But, yeah, uh, I know her Midnight Sun, Batman, um, the Midnight Adventures, it has Batman inside of it, which is interesting. But I was talking to her about uh, 
like the things that are going on within the community. Like I heard Blur's Eye View is doing a Blur news segment on the Blur station. That's a lot of blurs in one in one bowl. That's a lot right there. But yeah, I guess like I guess the the trend of Blur news that I beautifully started. I'm gonna put that out there. Absolutely, I, I like marked. I'm not gonna put a trademark on it like some people would. Wink. But you know, uh. Keep it together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the things that I did, which is blurred news. I almost lost it. Yeah, I know you heard me out there. I almost started laughing it up. If you, mm, nope. We're gonna talk about blurred news and the fact that uh, Blur's Eye View is doing this on Blur Station. That's a nerd. See, that's a big hefty bowl or blur soup right there, isn't it? Isn't it? That's a lot. That's why FTO is a nerd talk, and we have blurred news inside of it. Yeah. See? You see the wills and cocks of the movie? I'm patting myself on the back. I'll stop. I'm sorry. But there is a lot going on in like in the community right now. There's a lot of uh, <sighs> other things. I've still been watching Black Clover. I'm trying to see the appeal that Megan Thee Stallion has for this show. She says like, it's one of her favorite shows, so I'm still watching it. And then that woman says, I'm just going to like just do it. She's from Texas. Why am I listening to a person from Texas? That's wrong with me. I'm from Georgia. We are different ideologies. <sighs> but it's Megan Thee Stallion, so what are you going to do, right? So you just got to move on and take it. <laughs> I'm not angry. I mean, how could I be? What would I be angry about? That's the real thing. I forget sometimes I'm doing a podcast when I'm doing this, and I just start talking. So when I do that, I say some weird stuff. A lot of my, a lot of my, my, my friends and my peers and my um, associates told me that I should need to put myself out there more in the podcast, like the video podcast, like on TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that. I tell myself to do that as well. And then I talk myself out of it, like every single time. Like uh, Kaisha Black has been doing a lot of stuff in the cosplay world, like not. Not even just the cosplay world, but, like, just putting herself out there as a figurehead of the community. And, like, it's really starting to work out for her. Because she was at the San Diego Comic-Con. And she did, like, three costumes there. I think she did Superboy. Um, I think she did Far Sector. And um, a doula from Shazam Family. She did that at the San Diego Comic-Con. Then she did the, the Spider... The Spider-Man. Um... At the Anime NYC. Yeah. And I think recently, recently now, she was in London doing the Spectrum or Photon. I think she's going to Photon now. Yeah. I think it's Photon. And with the Marvels. The woman's on fire. That's all I'm saying. I know I saw Emperor Jasmine in her Starfire costume at, I think it was Anime NYC. The second, there's two of them, I believe. There's two of them. It's NYC. Like, do whatever you want to do, essentially. So, yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot of women in cosplay. I know B Doc is doing a whole lot of stuff. I think she's doing a pirate right now. My goodness. Just like it's a, it's a lot of a lot of cosplayers out there. And like like I talked about Venture Bros a lot doing this thing. Sister Kage is always doing his stuff as well, working with uh, the Psycho films. Yeah. They, they got like a lot, of, a lot of things going on. I think they got a new Jedi situation that premieres soon. So, yeah. I am really in the community. My goodness. I just pay attention. I need to do better with these names. A lot of these names are skipping me. And I'm not talking about enough men in cosplay. Um, there is one guy in cosplay. Like, I, I keep seeing his name following, flying around out there. It's it's escaping me right now. It's escaping me. His name is, is like, it's slipping my head. I know I see him around. I see I hit him up in the comments. Uh, I think he was at... Was it... Uh, dude, he was at Dragon Con. Yes, he was at Dragon Con. I was also supposed to have an interview with um, Black Lions. I don't know what happened with that. We'll figure it out, though. We'll figure it out. I haven't listened to my, my podcast in a while. It wasn't any news. Like, none. For a whole week. So I feel very out of place. Some of them want to speak at the house. That I have no idea what it is. Found him. Certified Cosplay. Yeah, Certified Cosplay. He is really killing it right now. Like, a lot of stuff that he's doing... It's just, it's just fun. Like, good old-fashioned cosplay stuff. Like, stuff that you, that you, you see, like, um, 
how do I put this? Some of the some of the cosplayer that you you may have seen like three four years ago, he has like that that energy that you saw back then, but he's putting like um a f he'll play with the that you used to see a lot of cosplayers, a lot of the women cosplayer did back maybe three or four years ago. I feel like like the craft in the women field of cosplay. This is just me talking and like what I see out there. I feel like the the energy you see in the women cosplay right now, like, and I, I do mean women, I don't mean non-binaries, I mean, like, I mean women in general, like, they, uh, they have, like, a perfectionist mindset right now in cosplay, from what I see, like, I, I'm not gonna say in a general for every woman, but, like, the majority that you see in cosplay, and even, like, what I see a lot of, like, the newer women cosplayers are doing is more, has to be perfect, absolute, absolute perfect, to, to the T, it has to be that. I think like a lot of like a lot of the, um, the more established cosplayers, the ones who actually use their hands to make cosplay, are contributing to that mindset. It's not a bad thing, mind you. Like you know, if you're gonna be a perfection of something, be perfection of something. But I do think uh, whom that aren't as that, even those are whom who um, don't take it that serious or prefer more of a, cl a closet cosplay. I feel like they are not getting the shine that you would normally see. Well, what it because like because of the cosplay itself, um, what people may think of the cosplay, or even like the the quality of the photographs that you see out there as well. Like whatever those those reasons may be, they're not getting the shine they deserve. And I remember back when I started FTO, that was the point of it. I know I see like the the anime world doing stuff like that. Like trying to like that put more stuff and like bomb anime. Like they try to like put more stuff out there for more underground or smaller individuals. And like I do wish I can get back into that, but like I feel like I've, I've changed my style so many times. Like it's hard like to to find out how to go about that again. But that's just that's just me talking. I feel like when when individuals get into a point of uh, telling other individuals what FTO is like, it's gonna.